Ghost in the Night with Phil Sams. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Ghost of the Night, a hauntings and paranormal podcast. I am Phil Sams. Thank you for joining me tonight. Um, we're back from our little week hiatus. Uh, I've got the batteries recharged and ready to go and move forward in the paranormal journey. Uh, today's episode, I want to play the second part of my conversation with Melissa Cummings from her podcast, The Haunted Ride. Great podcast. Go check it out. I really hope you enjoyed part one of the conversation. In Part two, we had fun. We covered a topic that is a little um, touchy and some people are a little uncomfortable talking about because there's such a negative connotation with it, and that is witchcraft. She goes over her thoughts on witchcraft, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it, and I really had fun talking to her with it about it, and we, we have a little fun there with it. So be sure to check out the this whole episode you're really going to enjoy it but before we get started don't forget head on over to philsams.com that is the official home for ghost in the night um you'll find show notes a contact us page where you can contact me and kind of share your stories with me or share an experience with me you never know we might put it in a podcast and also head on over to youtube we put videos of all the podcasts and plus do some other videos on when I go on an investigation. So head on over to YouTube, subscribe. And while you're there, head on over to the friends of this podcast, Fear Not Paranormal, subscribe to their channel and show them some support. They do some great investigations and I really think you're going to enjoy their videos. So let's go ahead and play the part two of my conversation with Melissa. We'll see you afterwards. Now, before we kind of get off here, there's, there was another topic in your last episode about astral projection that kind of caught my attention and it caught my attention for a reason because this when you when people hear this word there's a negative feeling that comes over everybody or a sense of dread and when i heard i heard you mention it in your podcast and my initial thought was whoa whoa, wait a minute okay this just took a turn this just took this just took a turn down the wrong way and from, I, not, it's not that I know you, but we've had some communication. This is your second time on the podcast. We've exchanged uh, emails regarding the podcast. So I have a decent sense of you from listening to your po- podcast and the interactions that we have had. And I was like, okay, I did not see this coming. And that was, you mentioned the word witchcraft. Would you please enlighten me? And exactly what is your experience and what is um, the meaning behind it, as in what did you do with it or what's your experiences with it? And if I should be nervous about you casting a spell on me, and, you know, should I start being really, really nice and, you know, sucking up a little bit? I would think that you would have more concerns about the actual projection thing than the Oh, that that does not concern me at all. But no, but I mean, I mean, if I could ask for the in your house, you never know. Well, that's you okay. Know, we could have done. Well, if you should have did it. We could have did this in person. This interview in person. Would I would have to have these headphones on? Come on, that I'm okay with. But you know, casting a spell on me and you know me growing a you know a third ear, you know that wouldn't be good for me. I know I have a hard, I'm hard of hearing, but I don't need a third ear. I'm good. I got trust me. I got enough bad luck without uh, upsetting anybody with any kind of supernatural casting spell casting ability. So go ahead and t- tell me your experiences on that, or because I've always heard that there's good witchcraft and bad witchcraft. In mo- but when most people hear the word witchcraft, they automatically go to you know, the occult and demonology and, you know, somebody, you know, a woman with a a big nose and a wart 
around a cauldron, you know, within a broom, stirring it up, you know, that's where their mind goes. But enlighten me and put my mind at ease that I'm not going to get a spell cast on me. Okay, so uh, to give you that, I would have to go into one other thing, which is that video, because um, I don't practice it at all. Uh, but half of my family practices the good side of it, half of my family practices the bad side of it. So, okay, real quick, this was the you did a episode on this because this was about your mother an episode about your mom correct when somebody um, i think you told the yeah, story okay yeah. I, okay yeah okay yeah. I, explain exactly so, what that is for people who didn't hear that podcast so somebody uh, basically you know um when we when we talk to church we going to go around and it's like everyone must be Catholic. Mm-hmm. uh it reached cuba mm-hmm. uh which is where I'm a range of many different nationalities and cultures, but Cuba is one of the main ones. So my, my mother immigrated from Cuba. Uh, my grandmother immigrated her children from Cuba. So um, the way for them to essentially keep part of their uh, sort of culture and still have the Catholicism which makes them to be a which basically is the act of, you know, if you think about it, when you pray and you ask, oh, God, please help me do this. Oh, God, please help me do this. Oh, whatever. And then your essential offering would be going to church, you donate, you do worship, you do whatever. You do everything that you feel like you're supposed to do. And you really, really hope that, that you know, God will give you this. Mm-hmm. Well, somebody else is basically doing that same practice, but to the state. So they believe that there that all the saints individually also have power, and that there's also other saints that they have, um, which also have power. So they pray to those saints, or they make offerings to the saints. It, it, it's very, in, in, if you if you break down religion as a point, it's really the same acts that you do with religion. You pray, you make an offering, whatever it is, and then you hope that you get whatever it is you want. You can make somebody over it becomes more into like a thought process because witchcraft is that the negative side of somebody will oftentimes uh, use spirit to perform the deeds that they want. They'll still do the, do the religious and do the offering and do all that shit. Mm-hmm. But then they'll turn around and then they'll pray to a spirit or they will conjure a spirit and say, okay, I have conjured you to do A, B, and C, and D. Mm-hmm. Which, first off, is very dangerous. Right. Second off, it's never good if they're coming to do that. And third off, it's always hurt somebody. Right. So the, the difference in for me with somebody in witchcraft is like, and and also touching my family is like my family, even my grandmother. She's she's taught me numerous different ways of this, but would often have to protect the house because we have a very large family. We're very integrated. I I don't speak to them, but they're very huge family. Mm-hmm. And so, for the ones who do the negative stuff, like you, like in somebody, every branch of the family has to have essentially a high priestess who is the best way to call the home. So that's essentially what it is. Your practice is so that if they need protection, they can have protection from the bad side. Or if they do the bad stuff, they can, it, 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 it balances itself out. So, if someone did something negative, or what used to happen is, if someone did something negative to our family, my grandmother would be the one to come to the family with it. Okay. Um, et cetera, et cetera. So, she didn't, or she could also do like a repel thing where she would cleanse and then repel whatever negative intentions was back on. So, in that, in that part, um, I always kind of think about it a little bit as a trap because, you know, you have the good and you have the bad. And you have like the rule of of, of good Wicca, which is basically. I, I hope you can't hear my dog. In I, I, I can. <laughs> That's okay though. My my little dog has been over here whining for like the past half hour. It's probably going to show up. <laughs> she, she's just being protective, and there's people walking by, and she doesn't like it. Um, but with with good Wicca, there's the thought process. Um. With good Wicca, there's the there's the rule, you know, that you basically are punished. And also the thing with the witchcraft is that you have to it's about intense purpose and what you say you have to say. 
Right. So I I had gotten into this talk for a period of time, which the reason why I had gotten into it was to because I had too many questions basically it was just not basically myself and uh, I just needed I needed something that would better align with most my thoughts and my beliefs. And so when I thought about Wicca, um, I, I really liked it because you know it's all about nature and the different gods and things like that. Right. Um, and I would only really ever use it for positive things. So, you know, we talked about how I lived in a negative household mm-hmm. with, with a, a lot of negative things. So for me it was only ever like to cleanse myself or to give myself some clarity or just a second of peace of mind and things like that. I didn't do anything like too huge or anything like that. Hold on. Sorry about that. It, it drives me nuts when she's working for me with you. That's, recording. A, that's all right. I know how I feel when I have to take it out. <laughs> it's okay. It happens to all of us. Trust me. My my dog, since we yeah. since your dog started barking, my dog is going in overdrive on the whining. And she's not even in here anymore. <laughs> And I can hear. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that was a little incident. <laughs> um, but I just, I needed, I needed something that would help me. And also, that was a period of time where I was trying to, I finally had said, you know what, I've had too many things happen to me. You need to sit here and believe it didn't happen. Um, that's being sort of unjust to what's happened. And I really need to sit down and learn about these things. And I know that I don't have anyone to teach me them, right. but I need to I need to learn because I need, I need to figure out a way to get better at this. I need to figure out a way to to understand what was happening to me. I mean, the word psychic wasn't even around when this was going on. Right. So, or, or if it was, it wasn't popular. You know, it wasn't mainstream popular at all, for sure. So I didn't know anything about it, and, and I had so many questions, because there's so many different things that I had access to and I could do, and I was just like, what, what does this mean? Like, what is, like, what, am I really doing this? Like, what, like, I just had so many questions. Mm-hmm. And it helped me to realize that one, my questions were okay, and they were valid, and two, that these things, you know, for for generations and civilizations and years and centuries and sort of millennia has been practiced and that, you know, there is something behind them. So it kind of gave me that, it showed the hole that I was missing. Mm-hmm. Now, I didn't practice it for, for two extremely, extremely long. I was carried the belief that, like, there's people who, like, they believe in Wicca and so they just have to learn to but they don't practice. Right. So, for me... Um, and, and the other thing too is like there are different branches of it. Like there's people who believe in like one thing or the other, kind of just like Christianity or Catholicism or whatever. There's people who believe in a whole different stuff. Right. So with it isn't just good and bad. It's mm-hmm. like it can be good mixed with bad. It can be the bad mixed with good. It can be good good. It can be bad bad. It can be any you know sort of a thought process at all. And it's, it's typically the biggest thing is just you you strongly identify with nature. And that you strongly identify that there is some being out there, normally it's a couple, who um, has created nature, and that you want to basically be as close to nature as you can be, right. and practice whatever it is that you can with nature, right. and kind of realign yourself and reaffirm this to nature. Right. So it it helps me actually. It helps me actually get to this point, and because of this, and, and all of my. Um, research, I was able to finally cure my spirit guide. And so once I started curing her, she actually helped me get through the rest of the holes that I, I needed to show them and the knowledge that I needed and the kind of confirmation of my abilities and what I could do. Mm-hmm. So I I will still practice it every once in a while. Like I um Last year, I had my first ever anxiety attack, and it was it was really bad. Okay. And so, I sat down, and I I'm a very like self analytical person. So I sat down, and I was like, okay, well, why am I having this? And so, I just went back, and I realized that I had put myself in a place where I felt like I didn't have the right to feel certain things or or 
be able to deal with them at that time because I had too many other things I had to do. So I had to relax myself back down and part of that also meant that I had to be spiritually well, which is part of where I said, you know what, I think part of, I think part of that anxiety was stuff that I was not identifying with my spiritual self anymore. Right. I had just said, okay, well, spiritually, like, I know what I can do or whatever, but I still want to keep that door closed. I don't really want to open it. And in keeping that door closed, I was also keeping a part of myself closed, mm-hmm. which I can, I, I shouldn't do. So, to partially help as a man stuff back up, I would, you know, very simple thing, light a candle, and I would do a little ritual to cleanse, cleanse the room and cleanse my stuff. And then I would do another one to cleanse the house, and then I would do a tarot card reading, and I'd do meditation and stuff like that. I mean, at that point, I don't think, I, I wouldn't say that any of that is specifically wicked related or, or wicked, mm-hmm. but I would say it's like wicked related. Kind of like, it's kind of like when you sit there and you think of like a shaman, mm-hmm. shamanism. Like, what's the difference between that and with us? Or what's the difference between somebody and with us? Right. At the end, it's sort of basis of everything for me anyway. My thought process is you're asking for something until you do something to get it. Right. So, for me, I was asking for a better sense of spiritual health and clarity in order to help myself become open again and to also keep myself pure in life and keep myself on my right path. Mm-hmm. And so then I just did candles and then I did whatever I need to do and then centered myself. Mm-hmm. I just used it, I used my skills as a way to center myself. I wouldn't say that I'm looking now or that I'm not with her or anything like that. I just sort of, I, I just like to classify myself now as the spiritual. Right. I'm just very spiritually open and, and sometimes that may mean that I need to do some sort of ritual or something. I mean, it's just like if you put down a new stage your house, would you classify that as a thing? No. Mm-hmm. But, what does it come from? You know, it comes from shamans and druids and, and wicca. Those are the ones who typically practice those types of, of things. It doesn't mean that you're wicked. Mm-hmm. It means that you're, you believe in that practice, you believe in this particular ritual, and you believe it might help you and so you're utilized. Right. You know, the whole witchcraft and, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> you know, I'm pretty open minded, but I've always, that's kind of been the one thing that has, maybe turn or not turn but i've been a little bit more we just talked about cynical being cynical more cynical with it because i I remember what was it, a couple it was oh, let's see i was listening to a podcast maybe this year maybe late or i guess my it's a new year i'm i'm a little behind i'm not used to 2019 yet um so either i think it was either early last year or late 2017 and it was a paranormal podcast, and it had, I don't remember the guy's name, but he was, how did it, what was his title? Um, in the Satanic Church, or Grand Wizard, or whatever, or whatever they are, whatever his title was. Which, you know, and he said he started out practicing witchcraft, or whatever, and he was doing spells to get money and stuff. And, you know, when he said that, you know, and that's how he got into, you know, the whole satanic part of the mm-hmm. the world, I guess. And he said he, he said he got the uh, he did a spell to get money, and you know he got money, you know. And I'm sitting here going, and then when he left to kind of move forward, when he left the church or well, church for lack of a better word, I guess, or organization or whatever, you know, he kind of was struggling. He you know he was on the run and kind of was doing that again to get money and working at some jewelry store or whatever. And I'm sitting here thinking, you know what? I have a hard time. If I knew a spell, I know human nature, and if I know humans, if they have a spell where they can get money and not have to get their lazy asses off the couch, that's what they're going to do, and they're going to be rich. You know, yeah. you know, that's where my mind goes with that. I'm like, okay, really? So you did the spell, and all of a sudden there was the tooth fairy left you money under the pillow? I mean, what the hell? That's where my. Well, see, the, so, so to help you, and you need to help with that. And some of the other people who do that too. Right. Like, there was this one time where someone, she, someone, I think, I think my mom needed like 40 bucks. And all she needed was $40 mm-hmm. to be able to do something. And, um, my grandmother did like a random little ritual thing. 
and my mom was went to like the grocery store or something, walked into the grocery store and paid for whatever it was she needed. Oh no, she didn't pay for what she needed. That's what she did forty dollars but for was to get groceries. So she was walking in and on the ground there's a twenty dollar bill and she's like, Oh my god, you know somebody dropped his wallet, somebody whatever. She puts it out to twenty dollar bill. She goes into the Windex there, I think it was uh Windex Wednesday. Goes into the Windex. And she called on the intercom and she said, you know, hey, somebody dropped like 40 bucks outside. Um, did, did anybody, you know, if somebody lost their stuff, come up and get it. And no one did. Which, human nature, if you drop $40, even if it's not your $40, yeah. you're, you're going to go up there and get it. But no, no one did. I pick up, so if I drop a quarter, I pick it up. Yeah. So the thing is like, and, and what you have to also remember is, is that's where the operating comes in. Because mm. someone lost that $40. Right. And that, that's the thing with like witchcraft, and that's why I say you're not going to do stuff like that. Mm. Which is why I appreciate witchcraft. I mean, I appreciate somebody of Florida towards you, but mm. my concern is also like, where did that person get that? Like, where, like wh- right. who lost that to get that? There's always a balance in this world. And right. so if you are withdrawing something, you took it. It didn't just, nobody magically appeared 40 bucks. Right. Someone lost that money for you to have it. Right. You just changed the path a little bit. That's all you did. Right. So, who's to say, you know, at the end of the day, who's to say that you deserve that money more than someone else? No one. No one can say that. So, that's where I have the problem, is when people do stuff like that. Because, right. It's not supposed to be for gain in that way. Right. And eventually that stuff catches up to you. Like is that. It, it really, it will catch up to you and the more that you do it, it will, right. you will eventually get hurt and you will lose everything because you weren't supposed to have in the first place. Right. I you just, know, we all have a path in life and when you do those things, you, you, you jerk stuff around that you didn't need to mess with. I just know human nature and human nature is to take the least path of least resistance and if there's an easy way out and you know it they're going to do it and and then they're going to abuse it you know and yeah. i and i get your point that there's you know there's you know karma basically you know what comes around goes around you keep going things are going to you know it's going it, to there's going to be a cost at the end but you know most mm-hmm. we as humans don't really think about the end game we're more of right now we'll worry about yeah the consequences later so that's just not that i say that all witchcraft is bullshit but you know i have a i have a least a harder time wrapping my head around that than i do anything else in you know the supernatural world basically just for the mere fact i know maybe it's just my lack of um how i view my fellow humans in most cases because i've seen the worst in them you know so i don't you know i don't hold I don't give them a lot of credit because I know human nature generally sucks in most cases. There are great people out there, but there are just as many scumbags that want to abuse the system. And, you know, you know, so that's where I kind of, not that I back off, but I, you know, I'm, you know, to me, like what our conversation today, you know, the astral projection, I'm, you know, I'm more open to that than I am to the the witchcraft thing. Just for the mere fact, you know, if there's a reason why, the lotteries are so big because so many people are playing, they want the easy way out, you know? So, I, yeah. you know, it's just kind of one of those things, you know, I'm not saying it's all bullshit, but you know, I just know how people are, you know, it's just kind of my kind of, you know, the way I think, I guess. Well, here's, what I, here's what I would say for, for this too. Based on, I mean, and this opens up a different question. So, if you think about human nature, mm-hmm. for the most part. Most people, even if they've had a supernatural experience, they won't believe in it because they don't want to. Mm-hmm. Or they don't want that type of thing in their life. Right. And they would rather forget about it. Mm-hmm. Okay, see that. So, what if the reason why people tend to, you mention the word supernatural, you shy away. You mention the word witchcraft, you shy away. Mm-hmm. What is this actually really purposeful? I mean, like, let's, let's think about it. Like, so, 
just say that, that yeah, if you if you make some which is not what you're supposed to do, you're not supposed to do that. It's not supposed to be about personal gain. It's not supposed to be about like that. If you're doing a spiritual cleanse or texture or something like that, fine. Mm-hmm. You're not supposed to venture in this place for you to get things, like get what you want out of it. Just make your life easy. You're not supposed to venture in that. So let's say that that yes, that any any person, if they <laughs> did believe in which path they did believe it in, and and, and and even, you know, in this point, it's, I'm not going to say which class is the one who does it, but let's just not say different. Mm-hmm. Let's say that everybody who practices on Sadia has the, if anyone is able to practice on Sadia, anyone is able to get into it, and anyone is able to get money. So let's, let's say they, they can do that. Mm-hmm. What what will we learn? Like, you will learn more things by the trials that you have and tribulations that you have than by just the appreciations and gratitude that you have. Oh, absolutely. You learn more from the negative stuff and more more lessons. So perhaps the reason why, you know, someone can't be or, or has a difficult time being open to the fact that, you know, if you do a ritual you might get some money. Is it for it's not because at the at the core being it's not just because, oh, you know, this is hard to believe, but maybe it's because so that not that many people believe, so that not everybody's going around and doing this and causing all of this, these, these, you know, taking for one person to do this, or paying, you know, taking from Peter, le- legitimately taking right. from Peter's wallet to pay for all. Right. What are the, to keep that? Because, because that's, like, that, you know, at the end of the day, that was my problem with Santeria, is that, you know, I believe in it. I've had too many situations. I've been involved in rituals as a child where I had to be involved because it was part of my family's name and so I had to be there. Mm-hmm. And I've seen what happens and I've seen like all the stuff that can occur. And so I definitely believe in it, but it has less restrictions than traditional witchcraft does, which is no personal gain and don't hurt anyone. Right. So, even though there's different branches, I mean, for the most part, that's the general rule that people like to try to stick with. Right. So, maybe the reason why it's good, in a way, and, and I would have never thought this until I'm going to talk to you, but maybe the reason why it's good in a way that people have, you know, the typical stigma of, of witchcraft is negative, mm. maybe it's so that people don't try it. <laughs> exactly. Maybe it's so, you know, not everybody in the world is reaching out to be like, oh, wait. You're trying to tell me that I can I can I can get like rich, right? Like for real, right? Okay, I'll try it because the thing is, like, if, it tr- if you try it and it works for you once, you're gonna keep trying it. Absolutely, you know so, that, like, that's kind of my point. I the way that's human nature, you know. Mm-hmm. We that's the way we do. Of course, you know now now that we're talking about this, I'm getting a little worried now. Hope nobody of my nobody that listens to this podcast is gonna say I show I'll show you now and put something now. <laughs> I just cursed myself. <laughs> Great. <laughs> this is all. This is your fault now. I'm, hey, look, you put the talk. <laughs> I, I'm screwed. I mean, I mean, this now. Now I'm in serious. This is one episode I hope nobody listens to now, because there's going to be a a witch out there. You know, who's going to say, "Oh, you don't believe." So, guess what? I'm going to get turned into a toad. Great. Look, if, if your next podcast episode that I listen to goes with it, I'm going to fall. Yeah. <laughs> All over. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, you know, witchcraft is just one of those things that, you know. It's uh, hard. You know. But I think it's supposed to be hard for people to Right. Listen. But, you know, I never really thought, I now, what you how you kind of opened this discussion about it, you know, the whole, I never really put it like prayer. You know, we've all, every one of us has been to church. You know, our parents made us go to church or whatever. We've all prayed to what, whichever God that you particularly believe mm-hmm. in. And I never really made that connection between, you know, it's basically, I don't want to say the same thing, but it's essentially it's, the, the it's same different. principle. Yeah. No, so, so if We're you're... We're all just hoping for something. Right, mm-hmm. exactly. We are praying in our, you know, the Christianity ritual basically is just, you know, to old-fashioned ways to get down on your knees and at the foot of your bed and you know pray to god you know so in mm-hmm. you know a witch just you know does it in a circle with other witches or you know with certain items i guess you know but it is what it is and you know that's just it's just something that's a little bit harder for me to wrap my head around of course now for those listening that are 
which is I, I'm a true believer. I believe now. It's official. <laughs> Don't turn them in a toad leaf. Right. Or that. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. No, well, but I, I think it's, it was a good, I think it's a good thing to talk about. And I, I do actually, you know, for, if it wasn't for us talking about it, I don't think I would have sat down and said, you know, maybe it's, maybe it is this, this thing that is good for people not to, you know, because the other thing too is, is, you know, in the story, there, there was a story I told about my friend who, or which we're not friends anymore, but at the time she was a friend of mine who she, she told me, hey, I need your help. I need you to try to help me, like, cleanse the spirit from my house. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I tried, and it turned out it wasn't spirit at all. It was a demon. I was like, what did you do? Like, let's think of it from here. It didn't ask to be here. It didn't really want to be here. It was showing it at home, and then you summoned it, and you pissed it off, and you didn't give it what you said you would. Right. And the spirit, what did you do? And it was her being a juvenile who had bought, like, one of those little magic books. Mm-hmm. She did a ritual. She, she claimed to be a Wiccan, but to begin with, to, to be, I mean, again, there are different branches of, there are some that might summon a demon on your ass. Just like there's in Sanfaria, there's some that might summon a demon on your ass. You never know. Like, right. you don't know. It's just bad intention. That's all it is. Right. So, yeah, yes, there, there are people who would do that, and yes, they will go through all the reasons of why they do it and whatever, and that's fine. That's, that's your thing. Cool. You do you. But she didn't, she knew what she was doing when she opened that thing, and she knew for the boring ship liquor that she was saying that she wanted to practice. That's not what she wanted. Right. But she did it to try to get the cheap way to go through and get what she wanted. So she had something in mind she wanted. She knew she couldn't get it from traditional liquor, traditional properties with that liquor. Mm-hmm. And so she went and she said, hey, I'm going to buy this book. Oh, I can send them a demon and ask them to give it for me. If I just make a little sacrifice, wait, I'll do it. Right. And then she didn't do it, got her, you know, got herself scared shitless, and then called me and was like, I need your help. And then didn't tell me that it wasn't a spirit, it was a demon. I had to find out when, when I went to the talk to the thing, and the thing came back with me. Right. And I was like, hey, so, can you help me out? Right. <laughs> so, you know, that, that is also like another case and point of where, no, it's probably true that people have, I'm not going to say it's good that they have a negative stigma against the stress. Because, you know, if you jump in and you're, you generalize something, it makes it difficult to have a discussion. And, and I don't think that you're generalizing it at all. I think because if you were generalizing it, we wouldn't be able to have a discussion. So I don't think you. I mean, so the thing was like, how many people, if everybody said, oh, you know, witchcraft was this acceptable practice, right? Mm-hmm. right. How many people would find themselves in that, in that, that space? How many people would try that? And cause, and, you know, wreak havoc. Right. And cause themselves chaos and cause their family chaos because they don't know what they're doing and they're just trying to find the fast way out of it. So maybe it's good that people, excuse me, that people have, um, a difficult time thinking that which fast is real or, or, you know, or, you know, and, and the thing is like in most, if you go to like a ritual practice, it's very calm, very cleansing, very like for spiritual and self growth. Right. At, at a lot of places. A lot of it is just like, um, there's, there's a great little, I don't know if you watch BuzzFeed. I, I, it's like the things I was recommending to me on YouTube. Mm-hmm. But they, they went to like a, a ritual. Mm-hmm. And it was a ritual to just be like, more connected to your spiritual selves. And they talk about, you know, one of them is Christian, the other one was wearing her cross. So she said, you know, she didn't go to church that much, but she did believe in God. But she did really, it was something that she was very interested in, and she decided to go to practice. When she was done with it, it's not like she sat down and she said, oh, I'm looking. No, she said, this is actually a really great positive experience. It left me feeling really good. It left me feeling very calm. I would love to go to another one again. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what most, I think that's what you want to get out of most of the But the thing is, like, on the other side, if you have someone who's never gone, they just buy a random book, which you can't believe everything that you read in books, or if you go online and you're like, hey, I want to cast a love spell to to, to make someone fall in love with me. Um, You can't, you can't do that. You can't, you know what I mean? Like, you can't, you can't be that easy way out mentality and just think, oh, well, me, 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 and I'm going to be selfish. So if you're going to get into that, you really should get into with that. Right. So maybe it's better that, that people have this closed mind thought process on it because then they can sit down and say, hey, you know what? 
let's just leave witchcraft and Wicca for people who are going to invest their time. Right. Because that's like the one thing too is like, no, you don't go to church. You know what I mean? You don't, you don't like sit and go to church music. But you have to invest a lot of time into learning and practicing mm-hmm. and knowing things and knowing different rituals. And it's really, you have to be very <laughs> specific with what you're asking, very specific for yourself and, and mm-hmm. whatever it is that you're going to do. Right. So, you you have to have a lot of it's a lot of time and practice. And if someone's not willing to put in that time and practice, they really shouldn't be attempting to practice it at all. Exactly, they can do more harm than good. You know, they you know exactly. You, right. I mean, it's just like you know, it's just, I mean, it's almost the same thing with everything, especially in, even like paranormal mm-hmm. investigating. Somebody goes yeah. in, you know, into a like my situation that I haven't talked about, you know, I had when I'm, I don't do a lot of personal investigations, you know, I do more places and, but I, I spoke to you last week or whatever yeah. about, about it, you know, and I, that was my main concern. I'm okay with going to a haunted location, but when I go into somebody's home, I don't want to stir up something, you know, I, you know, yeah. you can always, there's, whenever you deal with, anything in life really there's it can go one or two ways good or bad and when you're dealing with you know the supernatural or the spirit realm or you know witchcraft it can go either way you know i you know that's so people who don't know what they're doing or have a um lack of knowledge you know they can do more harm than good so maybe like you said it's probably a good idea that people most people do think it's a little too far out in the outfield and they stay away from and think it's crazy that way it kind of keeps the the pool near, or shallow so there's less chance of bad shit happening. Mm-hmm. Like I've got my next episode coming up, somebody asked me, how can they open themselves up to essentially you know, the supernatural and ghosts and stuff and because they want to have those experiences. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you really need to ask yourself why do you want to have these experiences? Right. Because, you know, you have to understand that. And, and I mean, like for me, I don't have any shit. Like when I have myself closed off and stuff, I still, you know, I walk into a location. I can still tell you everything that's happened there or whatever. I still get impressions. <laughs> the other day I had the worst, one of the worst dreams I've probably ever had. Not because anything was attached to me, but because I happened to listen to a podcast where the woman is sensitive and she, and I knew she was sensitive. Right. Like I can, I can think that someone has the potential. Right. To be so I knew she was going to get it. And she, you know, I listened to her earlier episode, so I, I followed along with that dream with her. She went somewhere to go help someone for this particular episode. And the negative thing that was there left an impression. And I, because of my abilities, picked up on that impression. And so right. that impression affected me later on in the day. and gave me one of the worst dreams I think I probably ever had. Mm-hmm. And I knew that's what it was. And it faded away and everything was fine and, you know, it wasn't an attachment and it was anything like that. But would I have had that impression had I not opened up myself to the paranormal? Perhaps. Mm. But the, the, that would also mean that, like, even 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 though I wasn't fully open to, you know, opening myself up and using my abilities and stuff like that, or trying to, or allowing them to be used, I should say, is a better term. I still listen to paranormal podcasts. I still watch paranormal TV. I can still sit there and, you know, and tell you if it's a real experience, tell you A, B, C, and D happened right. before I even watch the episode, watch the episode and A, B, C, and D just happened. Right. So I still pick up on this thing. But you have to understand that in, yeah, there's a lot of good. You know, there's, there's a lot of, you can help people. There's a lot of, of trying to just bring other people peace. But there's also a lot of negative things to it, and you have to understand that you're going to get both. Right. So you don't, you can't pick and choose. You get both. Right. Just like that woman I told you that I saw. I still don't know. I don't know who the hell she was. I don't know why I picked up on her. I don't know who she belongs to because she, she was, she was just showing me that she was passing over. Mm-hmm. So I had to pick up on the impressions behind that, even attempt to get at me. I don't know why she just wanted to show me that she was crossing over, but apparently, maybe she just felt like, hey, you're strong enough and I can get, I can get this out to you. Or it could have even been, you know, scrolling through Twitter. I know a lot of people were talking. Maybe I saw her face for half a second. And because I had, I was open and I had at least somewhat, even, even in the 
strangest and furthest distance way possible, somewhat met that per- like met the someone a relative of that person perhaps the place she wanted to share it to me, but I don't know if she's right. and I, I I mean I even asked you, hey, do you know someone? Because I don't know. I have no idea where she came from or why. I asked for somebody else who who could have been involved in it and she said, I, I know someone by that name and she looks a little bit like her, but I don't think it's her. So I and I, I told her, I said, you know, if you don't think it's her, then it's not her. Right. Whatever the message was, it would have hit home. So I don't know. I, I have that message and I really want to give it to whoever it belongs to. But because it was literally like a two second thing of her just turning around and walking into light, right. I don't know who she was. Mm-hmm. And that like that annoys the crap out of me because I, I would love to get that message out to whoever it was who was supposed to get that message. Right. But you have to understand, like, spiritual and supernatural stuff, you got to take the good and the bad right. because you're going to get a lot of both. There's always both ends of the spectrum. You can't have good without evil. You can't have mm-hmm. light without dark. So you have to take the good with the bad. Mm-hmm. All right. We have went way, way, way too long. You are aware of that. You are aware of that, right? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, I that. <laughs> we we went way too long. I'm gonna have, you know, witches casting spells on me by the you know next week. You know, <laughs> thanks, I appreciate it. All right, <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the podcast again. And go ahead and tell everybody where they can find your podcast, your social media, your website, and all that happy stuff. I am at thehauntedride.com. If you have any supernatural experiences, please send it in. They still send us the first things in there. You can also email thehauntedride at gmail.com. I still am in there. I am Haunted Ride on Twitter. Um, Facebook is the Haunted Ride. Instagram is the Haunted Ride. We've got a Patreon page too if you're interested. Um, but yeah, you can write me on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Music Day. I'm, I'm everywhere. There you go. Everybody go check out our podcast. It's well worth it. I'm a subscriber. I listen to it every week, as you could probably tell from if you've listened to this whole episode. Or the hell, this might be two. <laughs> this might actually be two episodes. I might have next week off. <laughs> hey, Sweet. continuation. Sweet. See, look at that. Look at that. So, so if you do get turned into a toad, you can you know, flip it around. <laughs> go check out Melissa. Follow her on Twitter. Check her out on Facebook and definitely visit thehauntedride.com and also check out our podcast. Thank you so much for coming on, Melissa. Thanks for having me. All right. That was my conversation with Melissa on the topic of witchcraft. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed talking to her about it. Be sure to subscribe to all her social media and definitely subscribe to her podcast. I enjoy listening to it and I'm sure you will as well. Until next week, take care.